Hi, my name's Corin Brad, and today I've got a nice sewing project for you, which is this simple Japanese knot bag. It just closes with a popper, so it's not the most secure of bags, but if you're just going out, you want something to put your lunch in, you've just got something you need to put some baby supplies, bottle of water and a sandwich, and the strap is simply made by tying together the two pieces at the top in a reef knot. Now, I've designed a pattern for you to make this the easiest thing to make out of a small piece of material. Because a lot of the time, when, you, when you're sewing a bag, you need a much longer piece of material, especially if the handle is included in the body of the bag. What I've done is the pattern is in two parts. So you have the base part of the bag, and then you have the extra handle that just sits on top. But what you want to do is you want to cut it out next to the first piece and if you do it that way you can e get each part of the bag out of about a 21 by 31 centimeter piece of fabric. What's a good idea is if you cut your templates out is put a cross on one side of them so you know which way round you're doing because you need to cut outers and liners and you need to make sure that your outers, you have two sets that are this way and two sets that are this way. With the lining material, if you're just doing it with plain cotton lining, you can cut them all out the same way because there is no right or wrong side. But what I have here are the two pieces of fabric that I cut out right sides together. And those two right sides together pieces form one half of the bag. Grab a couple of pins and take your pieces and sew the strap together. Just remember where you've got the curve of the bag here, you'll have the curve, an S-shaped curve going away from it. Let's pop the reading glasses on. Line the join up, normal straight stitch to join your pieces. And because obviously you're making a handle, which will be load bearing, if you just finger press that seam to one side and go back and top stitch it. Do exactly the same with the other piece. Finger press it. And top stitch it. Now if you're using a fabric that has got a directional print on it, you will need to cut it out in the conventional manner because obviously you're taking the handle like this but then you're turning it upside down to cut it from the smallest piece of fabric but if you've got a fairly random print like these it doesn't quite matter so much so what you need to do is now sew these together on that long straight edge and you'll notice that you've got the corner cut out of here and you'll think, well, why has she put a box bottom corner in the central seam? Well, this is because this isn't the central seam. This will become one of the side seams. It makes it neater if you can line up your strap joins. Sew it straight down the middle. And I'm using my normal sort of five, six millimeter seam allowance, which is a quarter of an inch if you're working in American sizes. Sew 
So what you've done is you've joined your four pieces of fabric into one. Just finger press those seams. So you do exactly the same with the other half of the bag and you do exactly the same with the linings to make two separate linings. And then if you place your linings against your bag right side together and pin, and again just try and match up those join seams for a neater finish. And the beauty of a bag like this is you can actually adapt it to make a longer strap if you wish, to make a deeper bottomed bag. What I will try and do is when I do the template, there'll be a downloadable PDF template. If you click on more in the description below this video, you should be able to download it and print it out. And I'll try and make sure I do one for a slightly larger bag but I know damn well I'll forget that I've even said that, so I'm not promising anything. But uh, people quite often comment on the videos, so if you do need a larger bag, just ask and I will do my best to get it done. So then what you want to do is you want to sew your bag together to the lining on the edges that will form, hang on, I'll show you which piece they form. The edges that form this part of the bag, up to the strap. down to the end. And then what you want to do is turn your strap the right way round. Now normally I've got a uh, a nice chunky knitting needle with me to turn these things out like this, but I have forgotten it. So I'm just going to have to use my thumb. And then manipulate that seam. So that you can top stitch it to keep a nice crisp edge on it. Thank you. 
really need to get one of those little spongy things that you used to have in post offices for when people were picking up bits of paper. Just probably licking my fingers to get some grip on this fabric is not the most hygienic habit in the world. But it's my bag. I can spit on it if I want to. Right, so we've pinned out that seam. And when you top stitch it, the temptation is to go from right from the end of the seam all the way around to the end of the other seam. Start it about two, three inches, you know, six, seven centimetres away from the edge of the seam. There's a reason for that as well, which I will tell you in a moment. And in fact, actually, as I'm doing this, oh, I'm just thinking to myself that maybe you don't even need to top stitch this yet anyway. I think you can probably do the whole thing at the end of the project. And that's the great thing about making up your own projects is you don't realise how you could make them easier until you're in the middle of filming them. But don't quote me on that yet, there might be a reason why I've done this. And again, stop about six, seven centimetres from the end of the seam. I have realised why I've done this. Yeah, you can chop stitch this at the very end. The reason I've done it was because on the other half of the bag that I made earlier, I top stitched it to save time. But that's how I roll. Okay. So you've now got your two bag sides, ineffectively. So if you open these up and match up the seam, so you're matching up outer to outer and lining to lining. And so straight down that seam. And just as you're doing that, just check that your strap handles are way out of the way because obviously you've turned them the right way out. If you're not careful, you might get them caught up in the seam. Like so. And then do the same on the other side. Stab myself. Mm -hmm. 
So effectively what you've done is you have sewn together the two halves of your bag like so and then all you need to do is worry about the box bottoms and the bottom seam. So we would do Turn it this way. I'm going to do the bag outer first of all. So just match up the bottoms. Make sure everything else is out of the way, well out of the way. And stitch right along the bottom. And then I, I don't know how many times I've, I've done box bottom corners or demonstrated them. Simply where you have that cut out L shape, if you pop your finger in there and pull it apart so that your seams line up and just pop a pin in there. and stitch across the corners. Like so. And then you'll do the same with your lining. Just tuck everything back in there. And I say you'll do the same with your lining, you'll do almost the same with your lining. What you will do is stitch the bottom seam first of all. But if you can leave a gap in the middle of it because you're going to need to turn it out. So sew so from one end to about five centimetres from the centre seam and lock your stitching off and then start again five centimetres the other side of the centre seam. to the end. Stitch your box bottom corners exactly the same way as you did for the outers. But I'm going to be so lazy I'm not even going to pin them. And then turn your bag out, straps and all, through that gap in the bottom. Give it a shake, but before you shake it right out, well actually you can shake out your outer fabric properly, but don't worry too much about pushing out the box bottoms of the inner fabric because you're only going to have to push them back in again. 
because they're going to be the lining and of course they'll be back to front. Just get rid of that. And just fold in the seam allowance of your gap. in the lining. And I'm just going to top stitch this. If, um, if you have time, it is a much neater finish if you can slip stitch it by hand. But if you've ever watched any of my other sewing videos, you know how much I struggle to even thread a needle sometimes, let alone hand stitch with any degree of speed and accuracy. It's all right when you sat at home in your armchair watching television. Because you don't have to worry that your head's getting in the way. And then you can push your lining inside your outer. And this is what I was saying about when I was top stitching straps. You can actually leave the whole top stitching process till the very end because all I need to do is just carry on from where I left off on the top stitch seam. But it would be a much neater finish if you did it all at once because at the minute now what I've got is about four joins in the seam. For the sake of the 20 second stitching that's actually saved me, should have done it all at the end. But you live and learn. So there you've got your bag with your box bottom corners. And then just very quickly I was going to show you, I've got some um, these resin snaps. I mean you can buy these, they're quite readily available. Um, they go by the name of cam snaps and they are essentially, they look like little resin drawing pins and then you have a male and female, that's two females, hold on, no that's two males, a male and female section to them. So this male section pops into the recess on the female section and to fit them if you just line up your top centre seam and with the tool that comes in the set, just pierce a hole right through from back to front. Pop one of your whoop, drawing pin pieces in the hole. And place the male section on top of it. Grab your pliers and simply put it so that the drawing pin is in the cap and you can just squeeze down. And what it does is it flattens the pin into the cap. Let's do the other one. And these are great. I mean, I've seen people using these on, I mean, they're great for things like baby grows, um, if you're making reusable women's hygiene pads, stuff like that. Because they're so quick to fit and they work so well and they're so strong. They pull apart really easily. So that's the fitting for your bag. And then just to finish it completely, fold your straps in half wrong sides together, like so. And tie a neat 
reef knot, like so. And you can just pull the ends out so they're like a pair of bunny ears. There you go. That's possibly the quickest bag I've ever made. I say there'll be a downloadable template in the description so that you can make your own. And they're really just handy little bags and they're great if you've got odd pieces of patchwork fabric, provided you've got a piece of fabric that's about 21 centimetres by 31 centimetres. So what's that? About eight and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. You can mix and match your colours, make your multicoloured bags. So it's a really good stash buster as well. I hope you enjoyed that. We will be back with you very, very soon with some more sewing projects. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Take care. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.